Hello and welcome to our webinar, Classroom Management for Substitute Teachers. We are very appreciative of your desire to work in the Griffin Spalding County School System and know the role you fulfill is vital to the success of our students and the climate of our school. Our learning objective for this webinar are tied directly to the performance standards for educators in Georgia. Performance Standard 1, Professional Knowledge. Performance Standard 3, Instructional Strategies. Performance Standard 7, Positive Learning Environment. And Performance Standard 9, Professionalism. The Griffin Spalding County School System has adopted a framework to proactively and positively address student behavior called Positive Behavior Intervention and Support, or PBIS. Just like our academics, we approach student behavior as something we teach and model. Throughout the school, you should see posters that identify student expectations for behavior. Make yourself familiar with these expectations so you can reinforce them as you move throughout the school. It is important to use the common language of the rubric when addressing student behavior. We want the students to reflect on their own behavior and self-correct rather than being told what to do and what not to do. On this picture of Carver Road Middle School's PBIS rubric, be respectful is one of their school-wide expectations. It is equally important that when students are meeting your expectation that you acknowledge them. For example, Thank you, Sally, for meeting my expectation of being successful by arriving to my class on time. Positive interactions with students will build greater rapport than negative interactions. Many schools have a recognition program that uses a token economy to reward students. Obtain some of the tokens, often called names like sand dollars or bear bucks. This is a great way to recognize students with exceptional behavior or who went above and beyond to assist you during the day. In addition to school-wide expectations, each teacher should have classroom expectations that are specific to their class. Take time to familiarize yourself with these class expectations so you can reinforce them, again, using the language of the expectations throughout the day. We ask our teachers to limit their expectations to a select few rules in which all behavior can fall. We also ask that their expectations be positively stated, whereby the students and teacher focus on what they can do instead of what they cannot do. Finally, we ask the classroom expectations be posted in a prominent location in the room where it can easily be seen and referred to as needed. Now that you have a foundation of our behavior expectations in Griffin Spalding, let's get your day started. One of the most important things you can do each day is to greet your students at the door. Everyone likes to be greeted when they arrive at a destination. The students entering your classroom are no different. Here are reasons why this time is so critical. First, standing in your doorway allows you to monitor both the hallway and your classroom. Student misbehavior is often deterred by the presence of an adult. Second, it allows you to establish a rapport with each student by speaking to them as they enter the classroom. These non-contingent interactions allow you to build relationships with your students. Third, it is an easy and efficient way of taking attendance. Take your student roster with you and ask the student their name as they enter the room. By the time all students are seated, you have taken attendance without wasting key instructional time and you have had face-to-face -face contact with each student. Fourth, greeting students is a proactive way of setting the tone that you are in control of the classroom. It is good practice to also introduce yourself to the student when you ask them their name. It's very nice to meet you, Sally. I am Mr. Smith and I will be your teacher today. Next, it sets the tone for entering the classroom. How students enter your class greatly determines how the students are going to behave once class begins. Greeting students allows you to control when and how students will enter the class. Finally, it allows you to give specific instructions. It is important that students engage in learning immediately upon entering the class. Give each student the same instructions for beginning the class.
The best way to avoid classroom management issues is to keep the students engaged throughout the day. Inappropriate student behavior increases when students are left idle or have no direction for what they should be accomplishing. There may be times when we'll have to enhance or fill in additional activities so that students are not sitting with nothing to do. We need to be prepared with the activities that can be easily adapted to the age of the student or subject of the class. Here are a few examples. Bingo. There are great classroom friendly bingo sets you can buy out there, but you can also very easily make your own versatile bingo sheets to carry around. They should be blank bingo cards that can be filled in by the student. Choose math equations or vocabulary words. For French or Spanish, have a list of words in their English translation on a sheet of paper and have them pick and choose which words to fill in each box. They can use their pencils to mark the corner of the boxes if there are not any options for bingo chips nearby. Trivia games like BrainQuest make some amazing trivia card decks for different grade levels and different subjects. The Canadian Trivia Deck is a favorite. If there is extra time to fill, divide the class into teams and have them compete against each other to answer trivia questions. Record points. Often the game enough is fun for them, but prizes and rewards can be used. Utilizing PBIS token economy is a great way to motivate the students and encourage participation. Write a letter to the teacher. Be creative. If the teacher is out due to an illness, the students can write an encouraging note. The students can tell the teacher something that they want the teacher to know about them, like my goals and dreams or how I learn best. This is a great way for the teacher to get to know their students better, even in their absence. Always have books. For the primary grades, bringing a selection of books with you is a must. Usually classrooms have a selection of books in them already, but it may be hard to find something they haven't read yet as a class, especially if it is close to the end of the year. By bringing three or four of your own books, you can usually be certain that you'll have something new to read to them. Reading a book is a great time filler. The kids love it, and it's educational. Pictionary. No matter what you are currently studying in class, you most likely have a list of vocabulary your students need to learn. When that is the case, a few minutes at the end of class is a great opportunity for either of these two vocabulary revision activities. Have your current vocabulary list written on index cards that you can use at a moment's notice. Then, when you have a few minutes, have one student come up to the board and select one of the vocabulary words. Set a timer for between one and three minutes, depending on how difficult you want to make the activity, and allow him to draw pictures or try to get the glass to guess the word. Whatever activity you come up with is better than the student sitting idle. Keep them engaged from the start of the day to the end of the day. One of the most common mistakes substitute teachers make is sitting behind the teacher's desk when students are present. When we do this, it sends the message that we are passive and not actively engaged in the class. Moving throughout the classroom prevents behaviors from happening and provides access to students. It also allows us to monitor student progress and engagement. Even if the students are doing individualized tasks such as independent reading or taking a quiz or test, it is important to constantly move throughout the room. Seating arrangements can tell us a lot about how a room operates. Desk in rows lets us know the students generally work independently. Desks that are paired up or in groups tells us the students do a good bit of collaboration. Teachers should leave a, cheat, a seating chart for you to use. If a student is constantly in disruption, sometimes moving their seating location is a good intervention. Just remember to do so in a private and respectful manner. No student likes for a teacher to yell across the room to move to a different seat. Making these demands in a loud public manner often leads into a power struggle. Speaking softly and in close proximity to the student sends a stronger message. Sally, you may be more successful if you move to another seat. 
Let's try the seat next to the boot case. Thank you. You will want to make note of any seating changes for the teacher to address when they return. You should remain the authority in your classroom. When you tell the students you're going to send them to the office or leave a note for the teacher, you are undermining your own authority. When we do this, the students no longer see us as the authority, but someone else who is not in the room. The word discipline comes from the Latin to teach. Like John Wooden says in his quote, we discipline to teach, not to punish. As soon as we realize that a student may be a challenge in the class, we need to immediately work to pull them onto our side. One of the easiest ways to do this is to empower that student. Give them responsibility in the class to assist you or opportunities to lead. Compliment them on their leadership qualities and thank them for assisting you. Earning students' trust and getting them to cooperate what, with us is much more important than engaging in a power struggle. Catherine the Great said, I praise loudly, I blame softly. Nothing can be more true for how we should address our students. Find the things they're doing correct and praise them for it. Then, when we need to correct their behavior, do it quietly and privately. Too often, a minor behavior infraction turns into a major behavior infraction because the adult in the room was a precipitating factor. Here are a few things to consider when correcting behavior. How are you going to handle the little things? Your success as a substitute teacher greatly depends on how you're going to handle minor behavior infractions. There is a delicate balance between addressing minor behaviors and major behaviors. We do not want to let the little things go so that they do not turn into major behaviors, but we also do not want to constantly look for misbehavior. The best rule of thumb is to remind your classes of the expectations of the teacher when there is a sub in the class. Focus on the expectations and not on the specific behaviors if the behavior is not major. When speaking to students, consider three things, your position, your proximity, and your posture. How and where we stand in relation to the students sends a strong message. Our position says a great deal about how we perceive our authority. Consider stooping down to speak to a student who is seated, or perhaps standing next to a student is less threatening than standing directly in front of the student. It is important to keep our proximity out of the student's personal space. Standing too close to the student when correcting behavior can trigger a strong reaction from the student. Be mindful of your posture and nonverbal body language. Pointing, crossing our arms, or putting our hands on our hips are all ways that our posture sends a strong message about our attitude in the situation. In addition to our body language, the way we speak to our students is important. Three things to keep in mind regarding our voice is our tone, cadence, and volume. The tone of our voice sends a strong message and it can easily be interpreted as agitated or aggressive. Remember to keep the tone calm and lacking sarcasm or degradation. The cadence or how fast we talk is also important. Keeping an even, slow-paced cadence will have a calming effect on the conversation. Finally, the volume of our voice will escalate or de-escalate any situation. We are often able to gain greater control of a situation with a lower, softer voice than getting loud or trying to match the student's volume. There are times when it may not be in the best interest of the adult to make eye contact with a student. There are cultural differences in some situations where making eye contact is considered disrespectful or aggressive. There are other times when a student may be feeling irritated and making eye contact will further exasperate this situation. Use your professional judgment when making eye contact and correcting students. All successful teachers have the look. There are many circumstances when an adult does not need to say anything at all to gain a student's attention. Oftentimes, this is the most successful way to get a student back on task. 
Make it personal means focus on the relationship with the student. The way we phrase our request to students will send a message of caring or condescension. Instead of instructing a student, take your hat off, I would say, John, will you take your hat off for me? Two key points. Use the student's name if you know it and make the request personal to the relationship. Instead of the focus being on the rule, the focus turns to the relationship. Rarely are we the cause of a student's misbehavior. We have no idea what our students may be going through in their personal lives, so do not take their behaviors personally. When we take things personally, we are likely to have an emotional reaction instead of being rationally detached from the situation. This makes it harder to make a non-biased decision when it comes to correcting the behavior. Finally, every behavior has a function. There's a reason the student is behaving the way they are. We just have to take the time to figure out what that function is and how we can help meet the need of the behavior without the student actually misbehaving. Next, we will look at the functions of behavior. There are four general functions of behavior that can be remembered through the acronym SEEK. Sensory, Escape, Attention, and Tangibles. Each function meets a need of the student. Students who desire a sensory experience generally are stimulated by something that they can touch or feel. This is especially true when the student is feeling anxious. Students who use escape to achieve a desired result are escaping from an unpleasant environment or escaping to a desired environment. This often occurs when the student is disengaged in learning because it has become too hard, too easy, too boring, or too scary. Attention-seeking behavior is common and the attention could be sought from adults or peers. These students are focused on social interactions and will behave in a way to achieve the interaction, even if the attention is negative attention. Students who are motivated by tangibles are often behaving in such a way as to receive a preferred activity or item. It is important to set goals for these students so that they can work to achieve that tangible item. At the conclusion of your day, remember to leave a note for the teacher about how your day went. Make sure you include highlights as well as any concerns that arose during the day. Make sure you include the names of the students so the teacher can follow up with each one accordingly. Joshua T. Dickerson is a native of Griffin, Georgia, and he wrote this poem to remind us of what some of our students may be going through. Because I ain't got a pencil. I woke myself up because we ain't got an alarm clock. Dug in the dirty clothes basket because ain't nobody washed my uniform. Brush my hair and teeth in the dark because the lights ain't on. Even got my baby sister ready because my mama wasn't home. Got us both to school on time to eat us a good breakfast. Then... When I got to class, the teacher fussed because I ain't got a pencil. Show compassion and empathy to the students you come in contact with each day. They deserve the very best from each of us. Here are some parting thoughts. Here are the keys to classroom management. Remember, teach, model, and acknowledge expectations. Create a physically and emotionally safe environment. Be prepared and have bell-to-bell -bell activities planned. Keep your authority, build relationships, and respect your students. Thank you again for your willingness to sub in the Griffin-Spalding County School System. We look forward to working with you this year.